Welcome to New Life Assembly of God Media Ministry. We are glad that you are here. We believe the Word of God is relevant and life-changing, and we hope you can be blessed by this message. But today we're concluding our series, Welcome Holy Spirit. This morning's message is entitled, Flow Through Us. Please turn with me to John 7, verses 37 through 39. We'll be reading there in just a moment. Let me ask you, have you ever seen one of those TV commercials with uh, some athletes that are playing sports and, you know, they're all sweaty and then suddenly, you know, they pop open a sports drink and they pour it down and, and all of a sudden all of their electrolytes are restored and they're ready for more action. And the implication is that this drink has the power not only to quench a person's thirst, but also to restore their strength and vitality and give them the power to push beyond the limits and to do great feats. Amen? But Jesus tells us about a powerful spiritual thirst quencher that enables us to go beyond the limits of ourselves, that enables us to live victoriously and empowers us to do great things for God that we ourselves could never do. And we read of it in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. I'm reading from the New King James. The scripture says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit would flow out of us as rivers of living water. You know, when I was ministering in Cambodia several years ago on a missions trip, I saw a river that runs right through the center of Phnom Penh, which is the capital city. And the river is the center of life for those people. Cambodia is a very poor nation. And they have a very dry climate and a rainy season that lasts only one month. The rest of the year, it's dry. So the people depend on the river for water. They depend on it to fish for food. They also bathe in it. They wash their clothes in it. They do unmentionable things in it. But the river is the center of their existence. And the analogy of the Spirit's empower as, empowerment as rivers of living water is intended to show us how essential the Spirit is to our lives. Because particularly in, in ancient times, cities and villages had to be built along a water source and that became central to their lives. And the Jesus is telling us that the Holy Spirit is essential to our lives and we need to live in dependency on the Spirit's power. Jesus teaches about this river of living water during the Feast of Tabernacles that is mentioned in verse 2 of this chapter. And the Feast of Tabernacles was one of three required Jewish feasts. During this feast, the people lived in booths. In fact, if you drive along Sheridan Street going towards Emerald Hills during the Feast of Tabernacles, because there's a large Jewish community there, you will actually see these booths set up in their backyards because during the Feast of Tabernacles, they actually go out there and stay in these booths still yet today and it was a, a commemoration of when they lived in tents so to speak uh, for 40 years wandering through the wilderness after God delivered them from slavery in Egypt and an integral part of the celebration of the feast of tabernacles was a seven day procession of priests leading the people down to the pool of Siloam where they would draw water in a golden pitcher and then they would return in procession to the temple they would march around the altar of burnt sacrifice one time and of course that sacrifice represents Christ and they would pour out the water on the altar of sacrifice on the last day of that seven day procession they would march seven times around the altar as the people sang praises to God and on the seventh time 
the priest would climb up on the altar, raise up the golden pitcher, and pour the water upon the altar. And this procession commemorated when Israel marched around the walls of Jericho seven times, and God miraculously brought the walls down, signifying that God was delivering the promised land into their hands. Folks, this is what the baptism in the Holy Spirit does for us. He enables us to defeat the enemy. He enables us to possess the the promises of God. The water also reminds them of how God instructed Moses in the wilderness to strike the rock and water flowed from the rock. Well, Jesus Christ is called the rock of our salvation in the Bible and he was struck on the cross for us. And because he was struck, rivers of living water now flow towards us. So it is not by accident that on the last day of this feast, Jesus spoke of the work of the Holy Spirit as rivers of living water as in the backdrop they could see the priest raise this pitcher of water and pour it out on the altar what they were doing in ritual Jesus was saying the reality is now going to be made available to you hallelujah he was saying to them what had been a ritual for centuries would now be experienced as a spiritual reality made available to everyone through his sacrifice on the cross. And as we consider Jesus' words today, I pray he would give us a clearer understanding of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and how we can experience it. The first thing I want us to see is that the river of the Spirit flows to those who are thirsty. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, if you're not thirsty, God is not going to let his spirit flow through you. If any man thirsts, and I want to look at three key words in that statement, if, if is the first key word. It means that the result depends on a certain condition being met by us. Most of God's promises in the Bible are conditional. He says something, if you will do X, Y, and Z, then I will do. X, Y, and Z. For instance, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here's the condition, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The if is believing. The then of what God will do is that he will give us everlasting life. In this passage, Jesus says, if any man thirst, that is the condition. The promise is rivers of living water will flow out from him. So whether we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit or not depends on us, not on God, because he has already made the Spirit available to us. So let me say that one more time so that it gets down in our spirit. Whether we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit or not, depends on us not on God because I've seen some people they may have sought one or two times and then they come to this conclusion they'll say if God wanted me to have it he would give it to me God already said he wants you to have it he's already made it available there's nothing more he can do Jesus died on the cross to make the Holy Spirit available for you there is nothing else he can do the rest is up to us if if we thirst if we thirst the second word i want us to consider is any if any man thirst turn to your neighbor and say you are an any man not an enemy don't say you're an enemy (laughs) turn to your neighbor and say you're an any man turn to your other neighbor and say you're an any man Why am I making you do that? Because I want you to see that this speaks to you. It speaks to everybody in here. This promise is all inclusive. It is for all believers. Any means you. Amen? On the day of Pentecost, when God poured out his Holy Spirit on the 120 in the upper room, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They all began to speak with other tongues. A crowd gathered, heard them speaking in all these languages and said, how is it that we hear them speaking in our own language when all of these men are from Galilee? We know they don't know our language, but it was tongues. It was a supernatural uh, uh, communication with God. 
And the crowd began to ask, what does this mean? And Peter stood up in the boldness of the Holy Spirit that he had just been filled with. And he said, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon some flesh. Oh, I'm glad some of you are reading the Bible. Amen. You get an A. The rest of you get a pow pow. No. Uh, <laughs> I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Joel prophesied that the promise of the Holy Spirit was for all men, women, young, old, rich, poor. It is for every believer. Hallelujah. If any man thirst, God will not turn away any thirsty person God will not turn away any thirsty person anyone can come God shows no favoritism the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not just for a select few it's not for pastors it's not for evangelists it's not for famous preachers it is for anyone who thirsts let me ask you the question how thirsty are you how thirsty are you hallelujah and that's the third word we want to look at is thirst we've looked at if we've looked at any now we're going to look at thirst these are the three key words if any man thirst the condition to receive is that we must be thirsty do you know that thirst is one of the strongest drives known to men People have walked miles to get water. People have drank their urine when they're thirsty to keep themselves alive. People will go to extreme measures in order to quench their thirst. And our human body requires water on a regular basis. I've read that people can live as long as 60 days without food. I haven't tried it, as is obvious. But that's what this article said. People can live as long as 60 days without food, but they cannot survive more than five days without water. We need water even more desperately than we need food. And just like the human body is driven by physical thirst to drink water several times a day, our spiritual thirst should cause us to continually seek God as that which is necessary to our very life. An interesting thing about spiritual thirst is that God deals with us on the level of our thirst. For instance, in Matthew 5, 6, the Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. God responds to us at the level of our thirst. What does that mean? Our experience of God is directly proportionate to our desire for him. How much of God we experience is determined by how thirsty we are. Little thirst little God. Big thirst, a lot of God. Amen. How thirsty are you? David expressed a great thirst for God in many places in the Psalms, but Psalm 63, one says, my soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. See, nothing of this world can satisfy the thirst of our soul, only the presence of God. And this thirst in David is the reason that God poured out his Holy Spirit so greatly upon him. Hallelujah. Moses had a great thirst for God in Exodus 30, in, in, in Exodus 33 as well, when Israel had sinned and God had withdrawn his presence, and Moses began to intercede and say, Do not take us up from this place unless your spirit go with us. And God said, I'll send an angel. And Moses said, No, I'm not satisfied with an angel. And most Moses pitched a tent of meeting, and he would go out there every day and seek God along with those who had a thirst or a s- desire for God. And every time Moses entered 
entered into that tabernacle. The Bible says the glory cloud of God's presence descended upon the, the door and people stood from afar and watched and could see the presence of God as God spoke to Moses face to face. And then God heard Moses' prayer and he said, okay, Moses, I won't just send an angel. I'll go with you. And then Moses said, thank you, Lord. I'm glad that you'll go with us, but I'm still not satisfied, Lord. I want to see your glory. Hallelujah. That was a thirst. That was a thirst in Moses. And God quenched that thirst as he let Moses stand on the side of the mountain and covered him with his hand. And he passed by and he let Moses see his hinder parts just a trace of him because we as human beings cannot stand in the fullness of the presence of a holy God and survive but he allowed Moses to get a glimpse of his glory as he passed by why because Moses was thirsty hallelujah to the name of the Lord are you thirsty for more of God or are you satisfied with where you are already come hallelujah And Moses ended up being so filled with the presence of God after he saw his glory that when he came down from the mountain, his face radiated the glory of God and scared the people of Israel. He had to put a veil over his face because he was so changed by the glory of God's presence. But the reason Moses kept asking for more of God is because he was thirsty. He was thirsty. And that's the nature of thirst. We must keep drinking continually. Thirst has to be quenched again and again. Hallelujah. And you know, thirst is a normal desire of a physically healthy person. Let me say that again. Thirst is the normal desire of a physically healthy person. It's only if you're gravely ill that you will lose that that sensation of thirst, of wanting to drink. And a thirst for God and his presence should be the natural desire of a person who is spiritually healthy. If you are spiritually healthy, you will have a thirst for God. So if you are not thirsty for more of God, what does that indicate about your spiritual health? I'll let you answer that question yourself. To receive the Spirit, we must be thirsty. We must have a compelling desire that recognizes our desperate need for His Spirit. We cannot live without your Spirit, just like our body cannot live without water. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? The river of the Spirit flows to those who are thirsty. The river of the Spirit is flowing, but we must come and drink. Verse 37 says, let him, let who? Those who are thirsty. Let him come unto me and drink. And this, pas- this part of the verse also has three key words. Jesus says, let him come. That's the first key word. And that word come is a simple word that we often overlook without really considering its meaning. But come is used numerous times in scripture to describe a person's proper response to God's invitation. In fact, there are two verses in the Bible that use the word come three times in that single verse. One is Isaiah 55, 1. It says, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. And when it's saying without money and without price, it's saying the gifts of God, the provisions of God are by grace. We don't pay for them. Amen. Jesus already paid for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be kind of like walking into the grocery store and doing all your shopping and you get to the checkout and they say, oh, you don't have to pay. Somebody already paid for you. Hallelujah. But we get something much better than a a, a basket full of groceries. Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation twenty two seventeen says this, and the spirit and the bride says, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Three times it tells us the response to God's invitation is to come. And what is his invitation to? It is to take the waters of life freely. God's word to every one of us this morning is 
come. It is his invitation. If any man thirsts, let him come to me. Come is an invitation, but it is also an imperative, which means that it is a command. It is God's command that we would seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not an option. It's not a choice. If we love him, we keep his commands. And he says to us, come. It is a wonderful invitation, but it is also a command. Come, come. The next significant word is the word me. Let him come unto me. Jesus calls us to make a decision about him. He calls us to come to him in faith as our Savior. And the baptism in the Holy Spirit is only available to those who have placed their faith in Jesus as their Savior. And in saying, come unto me, Jesus was equating himself with God. And this is a command to worship him, to recognize him for who he truly is, to respond to him as our Lord. The dividing line in our life is the lordship of Jesus Christ. Have we truly submitted ourselves to Christ? Have we given him our all? Have we given him his rightful rule and control over our life? We cannot receive the spirit until the issue of lordship is settled. Lord, my life belongs to you. I am yours. I surrender myself to you. Because you see, if he's Lord, I can no longer live for myself. My life now belongs to him. And that's going to affect the way I spend my time. If Jesus is Lord, I can't just visit him on Sunday morning. Hallelujah, I've got to live for him every day. He's got to be an integral part of my life. He must be central, just like rivers were central to the existence of people in ancient times. He must be central. My life must now be be lived to please him and to fulfill his purpose. If he's Lord, it's going to affect the way I spend my money. I can't just tip God occasionally. Hallelujah. But if I truly honor Christ as Lord over my life, then he's Lord over my finances and the tithe belongs to the Lord. If he's Lord, I cannot live my life my way. I must live my life to honor and serve him. If he's Lord, I can't live my life to fulfill my purposes. I must fulfill his purpose. You see, we must settle the lordship issue because the baptism in the Holy Spirit is all about surrendering the control of our life to him. Hallelujah. The third word is drink. Let him come unto me and drink. Some come, but they don't drink. The rich young ruler came to Jesus. He had a thirst for eternal life, but he did not drink because his riches were more important to him. Judas Iscariot came to Jesus, but he did not drink. Rather, he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. It is possible for a person to come to Jesus and yet not drink, not drink of his presence. We've come to church. We hear about Jesus. Mentally, we may agree what is said, but yet it never changes our life because we don't take it in. Jesus says we must not only come, but we must drink. And drink means to take something into ourselves. It means that Jesus becomes the source of our spiritual life. And not until we drink do we receive the promise. The word drink is not passive. It it, it is a command in the present active tense, meaning that it's to be carried out on an ongoing basis. We need to be drinking regularly of his presence. We are to drink and keep on drinking. It's a continual process. Believe and keep on believing. Continue trusting yourself to Christ as the source of your life and the one who baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. This is the key to experiencing the continuing flow of the rivers of living water. And that brings us to our last point. The river of the Spirit flows to all who believe. Verse 38, he that believes on me. As the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And in this sentence, there are three key phrases. First, this is the promise of God. Jesus said, as the scripture has said. Because there are many Old Testament passages that prophesied of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit after Christ came. 
We already referenced one that Paul, Peter quoted in Acts 2, Joel 2, 28. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Ezekiel prophesied in Ezekiel 47 of, of a life-giving river of the spirit flowing from the throne of God. Zechariah spoke of rivers of living water. You've got God's word on it. He is pouring out his Holy Spirit. He wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. This is his promise. As the scripture has said, time and time and time again hallelujah praise the lord the second phrase shall flow rivers of living water every word here is packed with meaning shall flow not a one-time event but a continual flow the baptism in the holy spirit is not a one-time event You may get baptized in the Holy Ghost one time, but you continue to drink and you keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is an ongoing experience of being filled with the life-giving presence of the Holy Spirit, with the moving of the Holy Spirit. It's not something we experience one and done. Some people will tell me, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost 25 years ago. I've never spoken in tongues since then. Well, something's hindering the flow. Because... The river is still flowing. So why is it not flowing through us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, And something I've learned through the years, the more you speak in tongues, the more you walk in the power of the Spirit. But it's surrender and it's faith. Shall flow, not a one-time experience. Living waters shall flow rivers of living waters. Living waters stand in contrast to stagnant waters. Stagnant waters are not refreshing. Stagnant waters are mucky and they're filled with death. Living waters are vibrant and fresh and full of life. Why? Because rivers are in constant motion, flowing, continually receiving in and giving out. If a body of water only receives and never gives out like the Dead Sea, it becomes stagnant and full of death. But if a body water only gives and never receives, it becomes like a little pond that dries out in the middle of the summer. And some people were like a pond. They didn't keep going back for refreshing. And they've dried out. But the life of the Spirit is one that constantly receives and constantly gives. Because, folks, you got to give to make room for the more that God wants to flow into you. It, it, you know, some of us, you, we, we live by the philosophy, a little dabble, do you? I got a little dab of the Holy Spirit, makes me jump, shout, and feel goosebumps. That's all I need. No, God has so much more. But, you know, we, we treat the Holy Spirit like a cup. You know, uh, you might have an 8-ounce cup or a 10-ounce cup. If all you do is receive, you're only going to have those 8 ounces. But God doesn't want that to be, he, he doesn't want your life to be a container. He wants your life to be a conduit. A container has a limited capacity. A conduit has an unlimited capacity. You see, that's kind of like a hose, right? A conduit is like a hose, and the water can keep flowing and flowing and flowing. It has an inflow, and it has an outflow. That's what God wants for us. He wants there to be an inflow and an outflow. What is the outflow? Uh, The outflow is ministering to others. The outflow is witnessing. The outflow is praying for others. The outflow is is moving in the gifts of the Spirit. As As those things are flowing out of us, fresh waters are flowing into us. Some folks have gotten stagnant. Because they've had no outflow. So there's no room for a new inflow. None of us here. I'm talking about the folks at the church down the street. Amen. But some folks are stagnant. But when, you know, when you're in a river, you're always standing in fresh water. In a pond, you're standing in stale water. But in a river, you're always standing in fresh water. And God is a God that's always on the move. He said, behold, will you not perceive it? I am doing a new thing. God is always about doing a new thing. Not the stale, stagnant stuff of last year. Amen. God is doing something fresh. God is doing something new. God is doing something now. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. I want to be in the fresh of what God is doing. Amen. A fresh flow of the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus said, out of his heart, or some versions say, out of our innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. This is not just an emotional experience. 
It, it, it's not taking place at the level of our soul. Now, we may have an emotional response, but when we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is God's Spirit filling our spirit and flowing through our spirit. Now, we may have an emotional response to that. Sometimes that emotional response may be to weep. I've had many people come into the church uh, for the first several times, and they say, I don't know why it is. Every time I come in there, I just begin to cry. They're sensing the presence of God. And that's their emotional response. Yeah. Some people may shout. Some people may jump. Some yeah. people may holler. Yeah. That's an emotional response. That's not the spirit. That's our response to the spirit. Put it to you this way. Stick your finger in an electrical outlet. No, don't really do it. Do not do this when you go home. Amen? But if you stick your finger in an electrical outlet, you are going to have a response. You may scream, you may shout, you may shake, you may pass out. Why? Because you came in contact with the power of electricity. Your reaction is not the electricity. It is your response to experiencing the electricity. Amen? And when the Holy Spirit is moving, we will have a response. Amen? When we experience the power of Almighty God flowing through us by His Spirit, we will have a response. We may cry. We may become extremely reverential and still. We may shout. We may jump. We may scream. We may holler. Whatever it might be. That's not the Spirit. That's our reaction to the Spirit. But when the Spirit is flowing, we are going to have a response. It's not just an emotional experience. It is a deep work of the Spirit inside of us and as we surrender ourselves and drink of him as we seek him as we depend upon him as we delight in him as we worship him our life becomes so saturated with the flow of his spirit his power his life that it begins to overflow from us and notice he promised not a trickle but rivers of living water, a powerful, flowing, abundant, life-giving flow of the Spirit. When we get baptized in the Spirit, we won't be able to contain it to ourselves. It flows out from us. We'll not be able to contain our praise. Our praise will begin to flow out. It will be joyous. It will be exuberant. It will be overflowing. Your praise changes when you're full of the Holy Spirit. When you're not full of the Holy Spirit, you're kind of like, hallelujah. But when this powerful flow comes, it just begins to come out like you took the cap off of a fire hydrant and it begins to flow out from you. It takes you to a different level. See, before you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's like drinking from an eyedropper. After you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's like drinking from an uncapped fire hydrant and it just begins to flow Hallelujah. out of you. When we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, we'll not be able to contain our prayers. Our prayers will be overflowing expressions of the Spirit touching our spirit and praying through us according to the mind and heart of God as Paul describes in Romans 8. Powerful and effective prayers because they are prayed in tune with the heart of God because the Spirit knows the heart and mind of God. And he flows through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. When we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, we'll not be able to keep our faith to ourselves. We want to tell everybody about what Jesus has done for us. And we will become vibrant witnesses for him wherever we go. It's not something we'll do because the pastor told us we need to witness. It's something we'll do because the Holy Spirit is flowing out from us like a river of living water. Hallelujah. When we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, we'll not be able to contain our love for Him. We'll want to serve Him. We'll want to minister. We'll want to give ourselves completely to Him for His use and for His purpose. We'll say, Lord, here am I. Take me. Use me. Send me. Do whatever you desire to do through me. I'm yours, Lord. Hallelujah. If any man thirst, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If If, if you're thirsty, are you thirsty? 
And I'm not talking about just being thirsty for the first time to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you still thirsty for more and more and more of his spirit? Hallelujah. See, thirst should be the normal desire of a spiritually healthy Christian. Thirst should be the normal desire of anyone who is in love with Jesus, that we would want more and more of him, that we would want the fullness of all that he promises us. And that's why he says, if any man thirst, let him come. You know, a few weeks ago, I was very heavy hearted when I gave an altar call for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the first call, no one came. And I know there are people here, and that was specifically for people who wanted to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I know there are people here that need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. But my heart was so heavy because I felt like, where is the thirst, God? Why is there no desire for what you promised? Thankfully, after a time of prayer and giving the altar call a second time, several people came forward and some were baptized in the Holy Ghost that morning. But I have to ask you, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Because if you're thirsty, then you'll do the next thing Jesus says. We'll come. We'll come and seek him. We'll come and surrender to him. We'll come and just yield ourselves and say, Lord, I want more of you. And then we'll drink. As he begins to pour out his Holy Spirit, we'll just take it in. We'll drink. And out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. That means we need to give release to what he is stirring in the depths of our spirit. Don't keep it in. Express your love. Express your praise right out loud. Express your worship right out loud. First in English, but as you're praising him right out loud and just giving yourself to him, the Holy Spirit's going to come and beautifully change your language. And as he does, don't clamp down and stop. Give release. Let that river flow out from you. Is any man thirsty? Let him come and drink. And out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. We're going to give you an opportunity in a few moments, if you're thirsty, to come and drink. But the first step to experience these rivers of living water is to come first to Jesus as our Savior. We have all sinned. The Bible says that sin has cut us off from God. We're spiritually dead. And that's the whole reason that Jesus came from heaven to earth lived a sinless life, and then gave his life on the cross, taking the penalty that we deserved so that as we repent, which means to turn away from our sins, as we repent of our sins and turn to him in faith, he forgives us of our sin. We are born again, meaning we are made spiritually alive and brought into relationship with God as his sons and daughters. And that's the beginning of a lifelong relationship with him. And there is so much more that he wants to give you, including the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Would you bow your heads with me? If you're here today and you would say, pray for me, Pastor. I want to come to Jesus. I want to repent of my sins and place my faith in him as my Savior. I want to be born again. I want to be forgiven. I want to be a child of God. Or maybe you prayed that some time ago and you've drifted away and you need to come back. And you would say, pray for me, Pastor. I want to come back to Jesus. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor. I want to come to Jesus. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for another hand. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for all those hands. Those that raised your hands, I'm going to ask you to just pray a simple prayer with me. It's not my words, but it's your heart and faith. And as you pray this prayer, God is going to hear you and do exactly what, he, what you ask him to do. Church, pray along with us to encourage those that are praying it for the first time today. Would you pray this prayer? Dear Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you love me so much that you died for my sins. Today, I repent. I turn away from my sinful life. And I turn to you in faith. I confess that I am a sinner. And I ask you, to forgive me of all of my sins. And I invite you to come live inside of me and help me from this day forward.
to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. If you just prayed that prayer, congratulations on making the best decision of your life and welcome to the family of God. That prayer, as I said, is just a beginning of a lifelong journey of learning to love and live for the Lord. And we want to help you take your next steps in that journey by sending you a small e-booklet. But to do that, we need your email address. So if you just prayed that prayer, would you text your email address to the number on the screen? And we will send you uh, that little booklet free of charge to help you understand the next steps to take so that you can continue to grow in your relationship with the Lord. But congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Yeah. For those of us who have already received Christ as our Savior, I want to ask you this morning, are you thirsty? And I'm not just speaking to those who have not yet been baptized in the Holy Ghost, even though I'm talking to you. Are you thirsty for those rivers of living water? But I'm also speaking to those of us who have been baptized in the Holy Ghost for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. You know, God's not about stagnant water. He's about rivers of fresh living water flowing from us. And I want to ask you, are you thirsty? Do you want a fresh flow yes. of the Spirit in your life? If you do, whether you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time or you want a fresh flow, if you're thirsty, let's do what Jesus said to do. Come and drink. Answer his invitation today. If you're thirsty, well, come ahead, to this altar. Ahead, come and drink. Just slip out and just say, Lord, I want a fresh flow of the Spirit. If you're not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost, say, Lord, I want you to fill me with the Holy Spirit because you promise this to anyone who believes and to anyone who's thirsty. Come and lift your hands to the Lord and just begin to worship Him and praise Him right out loud. Begin to worship Him right out loud. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Don't worry about what anybody else will think. This is just between you and Jesus. You're coming to Jesus this morning. You are drinking from Jesus this morning. Just release yourself to Him. Surrender yourself to Him. Lift your voice to Him right now. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. If you're filled with the Spirit, just begin to pray out in the Spirit. That's what releases a flesh flow in you. Lift your hands to heaven. That's a sign of surrender. Lift your hands to heaven and begin to pray out and say, Lord, I'm thirsty. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, let the rivers of your living water flow out from me. I'm here to drink of your presence, Lord God. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty thirsty Lord uh, quench my thirst with the rivers of your Holy Spirit oh God thank you for joining us today if you were blessed by this message would you consider giving a gift to help support our ministry you can text any amount to 954 516 one five two two. That's nine five four five one six one five two two. Thank you, and we hope you will join us again.